All right, guys. So welcome to a question, a Q&A video about Windows 10. Now, in my last video, um, as you can see right here, I had a lot of questions, and I may as well just answer them in this video just to get things out of the way. Um, is there any way to defer update downloads until I'm ready to do the downloads, or at least have the ability to schedule them? Yes, you can schedule them, and yes, you can defer the upgrades or the downloads. Um, uh, right now I have mine completely disabled and I'm not going to re-enable it but these are the options you get. Defer upgrade, you can enable that. Um, get insider builds, you can select that and notify to schedule restart. You can do that as well. Microsoft released a tool yesterday that allows you to select the updates that you want to install and the ones you don't want to install but the important updates are going to be installed no matter what for your safety. So remember that. Um, if you're happy with Windows 7, should you change to 10? The answer is yes. Uh, the main reason you should change to 10 is DirectX 12, and Windows 10 is more stable and better for gaming all around. Yeah, yes, that's me, Vincent. My son's right here. Come here, you're going to do this with me. I don't usually do these videos. Wave! Hello! Ow! You whacked me in the head. <laughs> Good job. All right, so let's continue this, shall we? Um, another thing you should do is you should research UEFI, and the reason you should do that is because there's less bugs all around with UEFI. Um, yeah, most people actually did love Windows 10. Um, do you have to reinstall your games? No, you can do an upgrade which brings you to the current version of Windows without losing any of your programs. Should you do a clean install? After an upgrade, you definitely should do a clean install and always back up all your programs, files, and games with a setup.exe, um, just like I've done. Uh, so as you can see here, I even have my documents and everything backed up there. Okay. Uh, Linux does work fine with the Windows 10 bootloader. Grub does great since they haven't changed the bootloader since Windows 8. You can also go back to the original standard legacy bootloader that came with Windows 7 if you want to. <laughs> oh, this one's funny. Share your origins library? LOL. Share in your shitty comment? LOL. Okay. Don't ever say those words, Vincent, okay? Okay. He agreed. Um, this one was actually pretty cool. As a software engineer, I am always, always trying to get the best and most updated version of every software I care about. I was one of those haters who were against Windows 8 because of stupid reasons, Metro. Um, but always I decided to jump onto the future. Now this guy's smart. Uh, now wanting for window, now waiting for Windows 10 because Windows 8.1 gave me a real good taste. Which is true, Windows 8.1 was a fantastic operating system, one of Microsoft's best. Windows 10, um, I never had any problem with it. Windows 10 is done because it was built on the same code. Actually, Windows 10 was originally built on the same code, but then they removed everything that made it Windows 10, uh, Windows 8.1 afterwards. They took 99% of uh, the base code itself and just redid it. They've also removed old files that were no longer being used, programs and things like that. And that also made the, um, the, the Windows OS much smaller. Um, my install is about 6 gigs. Uh, originally, you would need a, it would be at least 15 to 16 gigs. So it's, uh, it's much smaller indeed. Can you download games on Windows Live uh, on Xbox to PC? Ah. Uh. I don't know about consoles. I grew up out of them a long time ago, and I never need it one since. If I want a console, I'll just emulate it. So I don't know about that one. Yes, DirectX 12 comes set with Windows 10. It's been in Windows 10 for a long time, uh, since the 9000 builds. And can you use DirectX 12 now? The answer is yes, you can use it now. Is it any good? Yeah, it's actually really, really good. I didn't notice that he dropped his sookie. I'm sorry about that. So, 
DirectX 12 allows you to uh, pretty much go from 0 to 50 in seconds. You'll have great frame rates, great draw calls, will no longer be limited by the console systems, will actually be able to do more than they can now. Literally more draw calls. Right now consoles are kicking our asses on draw calls except for Mantle. Mantle games are able to do um, <laughs> about 90% more draw calls than consoles. So now the real difference here is well NVIDIA get their act together in time for Windows 10. Now that's not a question, that's me telling you. Don't count on it. Uh, Direct uh, NVIDIA was brought in at near the end of the DirectX 12 development cycle and they are finding it hard to pretty much update for every little optimization. AMD was the one that literally coaxed Microsoft into bringing DirectX 12. Um, yes, it's done. Uh, bring DirectX 12 into the world of PC gaming. Now, the reason why they did that is because they saw such a success with Mantle and the performance of Mantle that they were there in the very alpha stages of Mantle's de of uh, DirectX 12's development. So, if you want the most out of DirectX 12, AMD has it. Unfortunately, Nvidia is literally only getting DirectX 11 numbers that are DirectX 12 right now, so they're not doing very well. Um, so, next question by the commenter. Ha ha ha. I heard if you are an insider, you get a free copy even if you don't have a Windows 7 or 8. True. They've been doing that for a while, and um, you have to upgrade from the last release, which was 10166. It needs to be activated and then it goes on from the upgrade to 10240 and your activation will carry over and become permanent and stay with your Microsoft account unless you change hardware. So once that is done you have a permanent, permanently activated copy of Windows. Okay, that means for good. You don't ever have to pay for it by the way. Uh, there is not going to be an activation fee or anything like that for you. So, most people think there's a compatibility issue with OBS. There isn't. There's no compatibility issue with drivers, software, or anything. Third parties have fully updated everything over the last couple of months. Not once has this ever been done with an operating system that it's been out in such, such a way in the public eye besides what Apple does with their dev previews, which I fully are on and uh, I do a lot with. I have a Hackintosh as well. The current 10.11 beta 4, is it beta 4? Um. Yeah? Okay, so beta 4 has a Kex injection problem, but they're working to fix that now for future Hackintosh releases. Um, someone says, hopefully it will, be, it will be the most stable. I've had Windows 7 for three and a half years, and I've only had two blue screens. I've had Windows 7, oh, sorry, let's go back to all the way to the beginning. Um, Windows 1.0 all the way to the current Windows. Windows 7 blue screen the most for me. Windows 8 blue screen the less for me. Windows XP had the most driver problems. Windows 8 was flawless. 8.1 was even better. 10, I had no driver problems at all. Um, so, in all technical stance, stable depends on if your company or wherever you bought your computer or whoever made it decides to support you fully. Um, since my computer is custom built, Intel, Gigabyte, Realtek, all of them, AMD, yes, wave to yourself, they all fully support Windows 10. Okay? I'm on Z97, so I have support until like the end of time, pretty much. Um, <laughs> will, Steam S uh, will Steam OS ever pwn Windows 10? No. No way in hell. Steam OS is the biggest pile of dog crap on the planet. It's unstable, it's buggy, even the games that do run don't run very well at all. They crash half the time. The drivers on Linux are absolutely horrific. And it's just Valve is failing horribly at their mission to bring Steam OS. It's going to be stuck in beta for at least the next 10 years at most. There's too many flavors of Linux too much fragmentation 
So it's just not something that's in the future. Okay, now we're going to move on to the second video. The second video is my Windows 10 gaming video. Um, let me see if I remember these off by heart. Actually, I'm just going to memorize this. Does Ark Survival work? Yes. Does all Call of Duty games work? Yes. Does Minecraft work? You tell me. Um, we're actually going to switch over to Minecraft as I finish talking. Basically, if you have a game that's running Windows 7, it's going to run better in Windows 10. Uh, even Battlefield 1942 runs. I've tested all Call of Duties, even Advanced, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, advanced Piece of Crap runs. Um, all Battlefield games run, of course. And all the Batman games run. Fear. All your favorites will run. And... What is this? There's like a walkway. Look at this, Vincent. We have a walkway, and we're just going to walk ourselves all the way over here. So you have no fear at all about the compatibility of Windows. Um, this Windows was done the best. And, you know, any doubts that you may have about it, trust me, Steam has been on this thing since the beginning. Um, once upon a time, all of Valve games were completely incompatible for Windows 10. And um, now, well, now simply put, they're not. Valve managed to fix and repair all their issues with gaming. Also, there was a few bugs reportedly, I never experienced them, with Minecraft. Minecraft has been fixed as well. And I'm going to enable my Sonic shaders. So you don't have to worry about that. As you can see, uh, it works great. Now, if there's any more questions that you have, I'll do another Q&A video below. I'll also do a video maybe about the differences between Legacy, UEFI Legacy, which is just crap, and UEFI, which is technically the future. So, thank you for watching, guys. And um, for all the likes and all the support. And all the subscribers, all of you, thank you so much. And have a good day.